Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore. Over 50 are dead in clashes in Egypt that left hundreds injured. Meanwhile, earlier reports that Mohamed el Baradai had been named interim prime minister have proved to be false. Now joining us to give us the latest on these developments is Mohamed el Mashed. He's an independent journalist based in Cairo, Egypt. He worked for two years for Egypt Independent, and he joins us now from Cairo. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks. Thank you. So what can you tell us about this latest uh, round of violence that took place earlier today in Cairo? Well, the latest round of violence in Cairo is, has some very, very worrying signs attached to it. Basically, after morning prayer, which is about uh, 3, 3 a.m., 3.15 a.m., I get calls from people living around the, uh, the area where there were protests, uh, pro-Morsi protests, that there are clashes between uh, military and uh, protesters, and uh, the... Um, uh, well, it included the military, uh, the eyewitnesses I heard at the time said that they saw uh, soldiers shooting at civilians. Of course, uh, the, the, in the hours that followed, it became a lot more, uh, uh, the, story, the stories increased and it was a lot more of a conflicted uh, situation where, where you had uh, the soldiers uh, claiming that there were protesters who tried to uh, climb the walls of the uh, presidential guard club and that they, they, they shot back at them in self-defense. Um, the, the, the interior ministry and the police were also involved and implicated. Reports came out that some of the protesters had, uh, some of the protesters were armed. Uh, so it's, it's, it's turned into a big divisive issue. The media, the media is uh, going crazy, trying to report, trying to get to, to the bottom of it. Uh, however, there are a lot of anti-Morsi stations claiming that this is uh, just a manifestation of the uh, the, uh, the, 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 the violence-inclined pro-Morsi Islamist camp, uh, where, whereas uh, a lot of the other, uh, a lot of the protesters are saying that this is in fact a, 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 a symptom of the, uh, the, the military fascism or military dictatorship that they say will come and will, will come at their expense. So in response, the Muslim Brotherhood has called for an uprising intifada against the military rule. Can you tell us about, can you talk about what the mood is on the ground? Are people afraid of more violence, of this continuing to possibly spiral out of control? I mean, from the protesters' camp, uh, I spent the last two days actually uh, scoping out the pro Morsi camp. And, and uh, I'll be honest, from my end, it, it seemed like a very peaceful, I mean, the, 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 the outward uh, manifestations of it was very peaceful. There was some violent uh, rhetoric. And, uh, of course, uh, they, they, they considered the military situation, the, what happened to be a coup and nothing but a coup and a completely uh, illegitimate one. Uh, so now that they, are, now that they uh, according to them, have been attacked for no reason during their prayers, they believe that uh, what, they, what they feared, which was a, a recurrence of the Nasser era, uh, former president of the Nasser era, 1954, uh, sort of inquisition of the Islamists, they, they, they see, they see uh, this as uh, sort of round two or a, a recurrence of that. As for as for the the, the anti morsi camps, uh, many of them, while many of them actually are, are sympathizing, given that there are more than fifty dead, and a lot of them uh, understand that the military do uh, you know have been involved in the past in, in, in unwise uh, uh, clashes with the people. They're afraid that this could escalate, uh, and there are others who just believe that this will be a uh, call to arms for. Uh, for uh, Islamist groups who do uh, espouse a jihadist uh, rhetoric around the country. Now, did this massacre earlier today, do you feel that might change um, the opinions or the views of some of the anti-Morsi protesters? We saw reports of massive crowds coming out in support of the military, with uh, the military jets flying overhead, dropping flags on protesters. Um, could this massacre, um, as it's being described in, in some media outlets, could this kind of possibly change uh, this this game right now? Many, even many who believe that the uh, protests were that the clashes were incited by uh, some violent uh, pro morsi protesters, uh, the response was completely disproportionate in their opinion. And there is a history uh, of uh, violence, like I was saying, from uh, the police, especially against protesters, and now the military. Uh, the, the Ministry of Defense, along with the Ministry of Interior, just released a press conference. Uh, the Minister of Interior basically claiming that they are now absolved from any uh, accusations that they were involved in killing protesters, which is completely ludicrous to anyone who was on the ground during the uh, 25 January Revolution and saw what police were doing. So a lot of protesters are now uh, being reminded very, uh, 
uh, very potently that that what we're dealing with is a police uh, apparatus that has not changed. Their methods haven't changed. Uh, obviously, uh, a military that maybe has not wisened up to how it should deal with protesters on the streets. Uh, on the other hand, uh, in Egypt, you always have a reluctancy to uh, to uh, to distrust the military because it is, by by almost all accounts, and what many people believe it's, is that it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a it's a army of the people. Uh, so. Many of the protesters who, who, who were engaged in specifically anti-military rule rhetoric during the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces uh, tenure ruling the country, they, they are reminded of, of, of that time and they are starting to revive some of that rhetoric. On the other hand, many are actually scared enough of, of what they see as uh, Islamist uh, uh, violence and Islamist uh, violent tendencies that they are ready to, uh, to, to sort of succumb to the fear and uh, acknowledging the need for uh, the military to rule with an iron fist. And Mohammed, uh, this weekend there's also speculation and reports that Mohammed el baradai opposition, opposition figure in Egypt, he had been named prime minister. Those reports turned out to be premature. Can you give us the latest on what we know about if Baradai will become the next prime minister or not? Sure. Well, one of the uh, one of one of the parties or one of the political groups that were involved in the uh, in the, um, the declaration, the, the Minister of Defense's declaration of uh, Morsi's ousting and the uh, and the formation of uh, what's supposed to be a consensus government, uh, was the Nur, the Salafist Nur party. Now they play a very important function as the, the main political Islamist party that was uh, involved that was uh, that was uh, involved in the. Um, and forming this uh, new the roadmap forward. Now uh, the the appointment or the the the, um, the uh, attempt to appoint uh, as uh, prime minister was not to their liking, and they came out and opposed it. And so, if if the government, if the current government lets that go, if the current powers that be uh, doesn't listen to them, then they lose this main uh, faction in the. Uh, in, in, the, in this new roadmap forward. So there were a few other names proposed. Uh, one of them, Ziad Tahedin, he used to be uh, a member of the Investment Authority. I think he was one of the, uh, one of the executives uh, uh, of it. Uh, he's, however, he's a, 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 staunch, uh, a staunch liberal, and the North Party opposed that as well. Uh, there are a few, na a few other names, including former Prime Minister uh, <coughs> Hegazi, who, uh, who were put forth. Uh, but so far, I mean, Hegazi uh, refused the appointment, uh, according to him, uh, and, uh, and uh, we, we do not know who will be who will be called the new prime minister. There, there's still so many speculations. You have to be, uh, remember that whatever Barate's actual history is, there's a stigma attached to him that many uh, that, that no matter what the reality of his history and the reality of his political stances are, uh, cannot be shook. So as far as the revolutionary protesters on the ground in Egypt right now, um, what, kind of, what kind of actions are they, what kind of planning are they doing? Are they uh, trying to plan any actions or further protests? Um, talk about the mood and what the, and what the people feel like might, might be the next steps. That's very premature to say uh, because of many of the, uh, for example, tomorrow uh, the, the uh, the steering group, the, the group that, that, that uh, is the spark plug for this, uh, the 30th June revolution, they're calling for more uh, more street presence and they're calling for a continuous uh, uh, just the occupation of, of, of public spaces. Uh, on the other hand, a lot of other groups are, try are, are trying to reshuffle their cards, seeing exactly where they stand vis-a-vis -vis the military and vis-a-vis -vis the interior ministry, vis-a-vis -vis this roadmap forward. Uh, people are starting to realize that the pro marcy camps are not Perhaps they're not ready to step down, and perhaps that if a, a sense of uh, reconciliation and true consensus that involves them isn't put forward, then it'll just vote for, for a, a violent uh, next uh, few months, uh, perhaps longer. So it's, it's, it's a day, it's a few hours of really uh, finding out, like reshuffling and, and trying to figure out what's the best path forward. And no one has put forth uh, a, 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 a new kind of roadmap, I don't want to say roadmap again, but in light of the in light of yesterday's clashes. Thank you so much for joining us, Mohammed. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on the Real News Network.